How are everybody? It's a vlog. It's a poker vlog. Let's go. Seatbelt on. Bit of a different start. We're going to uh, start our drive. It is the week before Adelaide APT and we have got plenty and plenty of events to come where we have got a lot of games to be played. I'm gonna just turn right here quickly and take on some traffic because that's what we do. Um, but we've got plenty and plenty of events to be played. Today's event is not an Adelaide APT event, but basically starts off the Adelaide APT sort of poker festival that is going on here in Adelaide. Uh, we have got the free 50 monster stack down at Stack Social with a 10K guaranteed first place prize. Um, very deep structure and uh, cannot wait to play. We've been playing in between. We uh, have actually even played day one C of a regional event to try and see if we could win a stack into the main event without actually playing it during the series. Uh, that did not go so well. Uh, but since then we've played a lot of satellites. Unfortunately, of final table, a few of these satellites were not got there, uh, which is fine. But um, we've been playing really well, really positive. If you want to stay up to date with all those sort of informations, it is on my Instagram, which is always linked down in the comment section down below, where I will post all my action whenever I am at the table. Um, but today, Monster Stack just had my auntie's birthday, had some very nice Vietnamese food, so I'm really full. And now we're going to go in from minute one, level one of this Monster Stack and try and just play as well as we can. Um, in terms of Adelaide APT, that does start next week. Today I'm filming on a Sunday. It starts on a Wednesday. We're playing a 243 to begin. The Thursday I'm going to try and go from work straight there to play the, the max late reg, the deep freeze, which has a 50k guaranteed prize pool. $600 buy-in tournament. I would be late regging with 25 bigs if I do get there on time, you know, right before the end of late reg ends. Um, so hopefully with that being the case, we can run up a stack there with a bit of variance. I do plan on that being my main event night though as well. Kind of, I think it's worth max late regging because it's such a big prize pool that if I ran it up, it would be good. But at the same stage, uh, if we didn't run it up or whatever, it gives me all the time to play in the main event. Or if I miss that ma ma max late reg because of traffic, um, I can just play the main event at 6.30 and that's fine. The Friday, we actually have the day off and I'm playing the six max. Um, I'm also planning to jump in the high roller at the moment. Um, there is definitely, uh, depending on uh, you know how we go and the series, etc. as well. I don't want to be just shelling out a 1.2K high roller buy-in, but it's not the first time I've done it. It won't be the last time, so probably will. Uh, with that being all said and done as well, I'm just trying to hope that we play our best and uh, see what we can do um, in during those events, including the high roller. Uh, with that being said as well, I'm hoping to also, I don't know what's going on here, but that's okay. Um, I'm also hoping um, to obviously make day two of the main, which will be the Sunday. And then on the Saturday, I think we've got a mini high roller, day two of the high roller if we make it, etc., etc. as well. So yeah, um, but that's all in terms of Adelaide APT. In terms of today, we're just gonna go there, try our best, see what we can do, it's nice to be back in the vlog, and hopefully, fingers crossed, as we're driving, we uh, get down there and play quite well. And if we don't, so be it. We have been playing well, we've been working a lot on the game, uh, a lot of spots that we've been running and you know studying on with Raise Your Edge. So hopefully tonight, this is the time. We've been playing really well, we've had some decent scores in the past. Hopefully today starts a run of us going deep in a lot of events come Adelaide APT and just maybe we can dare to dream that this series might be the one where it all runs well. On our first break here in the MTT, the, the well it's not a freeze out actually, it's a free 50 10k for first here at Stack Social um, and we are doing quite well. It's a 40k start stack and we're up to 81k but I'm going to be 500k when we get back with a 1k big blind ante. So, in the neighbourhood of 81 bigs. It is not a bad spot to be in. Um, played quite well. No real big, big, big hands to talk about, but there's been two hands that have been critical to getting most of the chips that I have, um, and then the rest have just been taking down. I will say my table seems quite soft. Um, there is a lot of limp calling on my table, and uh, a lot of the time it's gone limp, limp into my big, or I'm on the button, and I've had a decent hand. Squeeze, call, call, and then I bet the flop, and they fold. One of the times we actually decided to check back for balance and then check the turn and check the river and we ended up with an ace high on a double paired board, which was good um, as well. So a lot of chips coming our way like that, which is good and picking up those spots. The two key hands that we need to speak about is one's an exploitative because I know the two players I was up against um, and the other one is pretty straightforward. 
First one at his exploit is 4-5 off in late position. I mean, the cutoff um, and as a limp from middle position from one of the guys that just likes to limp cool a lot. I've got 4-5 off here. I've got basically start stat just below, and I decide to limp along. And it pulls to the big blind, who's a very tight, tight player. Um, only raises pretty much premium from what I've seen. Doesn't bluff overly a lot. And he decides to make it 2k to go. And the blinds at this stage are 3 and 600. The limp call goes along from middle position. And we decide to come along as well. Because we're last act. We're in position. And we decide to call. The flop is the ace, deuce, and the nine. It is a rainbow. And it was a nine of, nine of hearts, deuce of spades, ace of clubs. Uh, it, it went... What we thought was going to be a bet from the, uh, you know, the big blind, uh, one of the tight players, and he had a bet repaired and then decided to check. The middle position decides to check, and I'm of course taking a free card here with the free to a nut straight. Um, as it so happens, it does not come as the nut straight. The turn is the seven of spades, so it brings in backdoor spades um, as well. As, you know, I've still got the draw to what I think is the nuts, um, and this time the big blind decides to bet for two and a half k, so down bet. Um, sorry, no three k. And it's a call, and I decide I've got a gut shot. Plus, on last act, if it goes check, check, I can bluff here against a tight player and a guy that could have any two. So I decide to call with dirty intentions on the river. And in the end, we get the dirty intentions on the river. The board on the river is the nine of clubs. So the spades missed, all the obvious draws missed. I didn't get there with my gut shot. And the big blind pauses before checking. The middle position player checks. And I to myself go, well, I've got four, well, five high. I need to go with it and decided to, in the end, bomb it for 11K into a pot that was roughly around that size. I was just trying to go on the larger size just to know it, it had to work a lot in order for us to be good. And as it so happened, the big blind thought about it for a while, decided to fold. And it wouldn't surprise me this guy folded a weak ace in this spot as well because of how tight I've seen him. And then the middle position player instantly mucked and we take down a big one. Next hand, the middle position player and myself get in a nice juicy hand. He raises from in the, well, now he's like under the gun plus two and I'm in middle position. And I've got kings, red kings, and he makes it 1.4K to go at three and 600. I make it four and a half to go. Folds around and he decides to call. The board comes eight high on eight, five, six, and he decides to check. I bet 9K. Fairly large size, so knowing he's calling with any pair, any overs, and I honestly think against this play here, if he has queens or jacks, he's just going to re-raise and we're going to get it in, and I'm going to be in good shape. Um, and he calls. The turn's not a bad card as well. The turn's another six, pairs the board, and I'm like, right, okay, not a bad spot here. Not a bad spot. I still think i got the best hand. How many sixes does he have? He has either quad sixes or a six suited, and if he called a six suited, then we're just going to lose a big pot. Um, he decides on a check. I make it 12K to go and he calls pretty quickly. Right now in my head, I'm going, right, there is a, there's not much that beats me on this run out. If I'm up against eights or nines, and so be it, because it, you can have them here. Um, and then the river's not the best of card. The river's a four, and I believe that makes a four card straight if you have a seven. I think about it when he checks to me, and in the end, decide I'm the less variable option of checking back. There's a couple of reasons why. I do think we can get a call from him some of the time. And, but a lot of his calling range is either close to mine or beating me. Also because he raised called, he could have nines, he could have eights, and he's slow paying me into oblivion with a boat. Um, and I don't know how much 7x he has apart from pocket sevens and four dollars bluffing the whole time like ace, king, ace, queen, and then it's just run into a straight. Because he can have more of those combos than me, I decide to check it back. In the end, he had ace, five of diamonds, and, in, and he actually... You know, he flopped the five and decided to stick around. One of the cards was a diamond, so he's trying to, you know, turn some back to equity. And then on the turn, don't know why he calls. Um, I don't know if you call the turn to bet the river. Uh, I will say if he led the river after check, call, check, call, we are calling against that line. Um, yeah, some of the times it's sevens and some of the times it's like a boat. But most of the time, this is a hand like jacks or queens that wants value or and we beat. Or a lot of the time, it's like I have a pair plus a draw like ace, five suited. And I'm just trying to bet you off it, and we're not going anywhere with kings, because realistically, I don't think anything but a boat or seven bets. And how many sevens does he have? Not many. And how many boats does he have played? Just check, call, check, call against this player? Not many. So in the end, good spot. We're up to 81k, and we're feeling really good. Now to head back in there, um, goal for here is to just keep playing my best. Long way to go. Um, because I've got up to 81k, I would not be putting in a second bullet here because I don't think I could run it back up to 81k. Um, you know, start back is 40k if I was the busted in this level, but that's not the mentality or the mindset I want to go with. 
Lucky last thing I will say about this as well is I just need to keep on keeping my posture at the table, keep up the breathing and all the mental work that I've been doing along with the theoretical side, which you know, I feel like I'm playing well and I have been for the last few weeks. If you've been following my Instagram, I've had some deep runs that haven't you know, equaled into anything. Um, but hopefully today's the day and we'll see how we go. On break number two, up to about 180, 190k give or take, because I didn't count last hand before a break, I knocked out an opponent. Two hands to talk about realistically, the knockout hand of the opponent, but more importantly the hand that got us past 100k comfortably. Gets the same player here that I mentioned middle position, he then busted and subsequently got ace queen in against aces and hit trip queens. So Mark Dim is quite wild. We had a hand where we raised jack 10 off in middle position, but only reason why we raised it in middle position at the blinds at 1-2 um, was the big blind was sitting out. Um, he calls out the small line, we're off to a flop, that is 10-9 deuce rainbow. Um, I see bet, and I see bet after making it, what, I think it was 4.5k, I see bet for 6k, he calls. So turns the 10 of diamonds, and he checks again, and after seeing what I saw before, he was going to check call, check call. So I'd go on the large side and bet 9k. He thinks for a while, and he calls. The river's the king, uh, completes no draws, and we're pretty good. Queen Jack actually gets there, um, but we're not too worried about Queen Jack, because we... Uh, have jack 10 um and i bet 14k and he snap calls and he has ace king and we are good um onto the hand where we bust the opponent as well uh as we forementioned i uh, know on my instagram story if you haven't seen it um we get dealt the eight nine of spades um in the cutoff the blinds are one and a half two and a half um and i let into just min raise the 5k table's been so coolly the hand goes multi-way and there's been so much action with weird hands that if i flop big we could pay a monster pot um, in the end, three quarters, uh, so it's about just over 15k in the pot. Um, and in the end, the flop is the eight of hearts, the six of hearts, and the two of spades. Um, checks to me, um, with the big blind who defended, and then a player on the button who also called. Um, I then elect to raise six and a half k folds, and the big blind off a 35k start, a 35k stack, so just under starting decides to flat. No dramas there at all. Um, turn is the eight of diamonds, so we turn trips. Um, we lose the sixes, we lose the deuces. That's it. Um, he leads for 7k. Straight away, I'm thinking he's in the big blind. He has either ace deuce with the ace of hearts. He has, um, and he's block betting to see a river. Um, and he's using his ace of hearts as a bit of a bluff, as a bit of a bluff casher. Um, he's also got, you know, sixes, deuces, and a lot of just heart draws that are trying to block bet see a river. He has about 14 behind. And with that being said, with 14 behind, I just elect to jam him. He tanks for a while into where the break gets going, and he calls with ace, deuce, no heart. So he called the deuce of clubs and ace of spades. So he called drawing dead, which means the river was subsequently no dramas. I don't even know what the river card was because I already counted the chips um, that I was winning. Um, and yeah, really loose call. Um, I could understand if he called ace, deuce with ace of heart and then just subsequently put me on no draw. I guess with... Having no ace of hearts, I could have like two overs with a heart with a heart draw with the ace of hearts, so that's not the worst call in the world. Just um, once he left 7k and he only left himself up 13 behind, what is he expecting to happen with ace deuce there? So, a bit of a weird line by him. We're loving life, and in the end, we are going on to this dinner break with about 180 190k, and the blinds are going to be one and a half 3k when we go back, so in a really good spot. Only thing I will say that isn't so good is the guy in my left and the guy in my next left are. Got stacks as well at about 180, 200k as well. So I reckon we are in the top six stacks in this room, and I reckon three of us are sitting in a row. And the guy from middle position who we've taken chips from has got about 200k as well. Well, guys, I'm still in on the break, but we are short, and that is kind of where we sit. Apologies for the lighting, but it is dark out, and yeah, I'm gonna take a seat just here. Um, ran horrible in the last hour and a half. Um, yeah, just one of those things that happen, I guess. Um, first two hands off the break went from having, I actually miscounted, had just over 200K, um, and it went back, lost about 80, 90K in two hands, and both hands we should have won. Um, well, one hand we should definitely have won, and the other one was a flip. Um, in the end, uh, first hand off the break, I am in the big blind, two limps, folds to me. I decide, and I think the blinds were one and a half, three. Um, I decide to make it 13 after the two limps, the first eligible rimper from middle position um, decides to tank and then jam it in for 36k. Fold, we've already put 11 out there. We have ace 10 suited. When we do make this squeeze, 
um, I call, it says we're gambling as King Jack off. Board runs, well, board does not run out well, but um, ace in the window, ace of diamonds, and I think we're pretty good. Followed by two other diamonds, he has the jack of diamonds, and on the turn, he turns the ten of diamonds. We actually had an out to the ace or the ten for a boat, we didn't get there, side. Not too bad, next hand, weird hand. I have ace three of clubs on the button, limps around to me. I decide if I squeeze here, I'm just gonna get a touch of calls. I decide if I jam here, it's just, why am I jamming? You know, how many big blinds? So that's out of the picture. Could squeeze for like 40K and then whatever. I mean, in the end, I just choose on the limp because I feel like that's probably the better play. And then when someone squeezes, I'm on the button, I can flat my ace X suited. Um, in the end, um, it's a limp pot eight handed approaching the end of rebuy and i'm just like wow what a pop and the board's pretty good eight of clubs five of clubs three of hearts and we have eight free suited checks around to me on the button i decide to make it 10k into a pot that well, was about what three six nine twelve eighteen twenty four thirty six forty two k um folds around to the guy in the cutoff who decides to jam it in for 40k we snap he uh, rolled over ace three clubs and says, oh, that's not the hand I want to see. And he has the queen jack of clubs. So we have him absolutely crushed for the club draw. He can only hit a queen or a jack. Turn, no good. River, no good for him. River, jack of diamonds. We win both those hands over 300k. We lose both those hands. We're down 100. We then grind it back up to 200k. Sat at about 230, but the blinds have been getting really big and I've been pretty card dead. Um, with the short stack, I've had sevens where I just flatted a raise against a guy that would have called me with all the chips and in the end it came up two overs and he showed ace king so avoided uh being out of the tournament there um we then jammed at sixes and took it down pre and then we had one pot wide at the end where maybe i misplayed it um had the king six of spades someone made it 2.5 x ago with a call on the button i'm in the big so i decided to defend off my short stack knowing if i get any part of the board i'm check jamming or getting creative um had the king six of spades six of hearts uh, queen of diamonds and um four spades something like that um i could check jam and i wish i did because i think we get to see bet and we jam and we get it through as it so happens i don't leave the 10 and the reason why i want to block bet any spade turn i jam um and then it just looks super duper strong um it also means that when i get called i've got equity i just feel like if i check jam and get snapped i'm always up against queen x or ace queen or whatever and we're just gonna get lucky up um Two ways to play that. I prefer the check jam because the C bet could be so wide. Um, as it so happens, we get a call, turns a seven, off suit seven, I check, and you know, my opponent checks, and the river's an off suit nine, I check, and my opponent checks, rolls over nine, eight of spades, and he rivered a nine. Might sound quite trivial, but that's like a 40k pot, and when you got like 10 bigs, that's massive. When we come back from the break, we've got like eight big blinds. I've got an orbit before I'm in the big. Um, we're basically just jamming anything pretty and praying. There's 14 people left, uh, 13 people left, sorry, as um, we just lost one on the break. Seven get paid. We are four spots from a final table. Top seven get paid. If we could double twice, that's really good. Only thing I could say is the blinds are kind of catching everybody, so it's getting quite turbo-ish, which means that people not wanting to cool off, but I've got two guys with like over 350, 400K stacks on my table that are pretty happy to cool off. Um, I'm just going to get it in wherever I can. Um, the only hands that I don't think I'm getting in pre is I'm in raising aces and kings. And then that's really it. Everything else I'm jamming, so... Yeah, we're just at that stage where we need to win a flip um, or, you know, we're in the big blind and get to see a flop and flop magic. One of the two. We'll see how we go. Keep the positivity. I've played really well. No mistakes, you know. At the end of the hand, at the end of the day, the only mini mistake I've had was the king six where I could have checked jammed if there was a C bet. But it, judging from what the hands were, the guy's at 9-8 space, he just checks there because, you know, he can turn a spade and the other guy had deuces that folded. So he just checks along on the button. Um, but... Uh, that all being said and done, that's really it. The only hands I've missed that I haven't ran well in are the two hands after the break where I've lost 100k, where we win both. We're not even in this spot. So, yeah, here's what it is. Hopefully it turns here and we run well. well this we sums up, like, the last two and a half, three months of grinding. I've been in so many deepest spots in the MTTs with no real luck. It's another one of those oh-so-maybe moments, and I'm just... Yeah, it hurts. Um, in the end, bust out hand very quick and easy. Uh, down to nine bigs, grinding my ass off on this short stack as I'm walking to the car, so it's why it's so dark. There's my face. There we go. I was standing right here. Um, and in the end, I jam ace queen for nine bigs, ace queen off under the gun, and get snap jammed on under the gun plus one. We actually have uh, the fish that 
tanks and you know we've taken money off tank forever and end up folding a pocket pair um and i know the guy to the undergun plus one he's a good guy um and we were talking about the hands and i was like i think i'm pretty screwed here that you've snapped and he goes yeah maybe and i was like yeah and then in the end i'm like ace queen ace king he's like yeah and that's it i jam ace queen and ace king king in the window did turn a queen to give some out it's a good eight. went running queens to stay in the tournament would have been nice but yeah, in the end, that's it. Just, uh, you know, what, what we needed was one double. Get back to 18, 20 bigs, and we probably would make the money. So, yeah, we bust in 13th or 12th, one of the two. Not too sure. Um, not much we can really fucking do, I don't think. Uh, just, I'll, I'll keep playing well, and hopefully it ends this run of, like, soft bubbling the money and, you know, getting beat just here and there just stops. But, yeah, it's... It is what it is at the minute. I am playing really well. I feel really good about my game. And it's just another spot where I'm just like, really, come on. I've had a couple deep runs in satellites where I've come oh so close to a ticket, nothing. I've had a few deep runs now in some other like tournaments online, nothing. And yeah, just at the end of the day, it's the two hands after the break that's killed me here. Because if I had over 350k, 300k where i should have i'm probably not as short as i am now being card dead i've still got a bit more i'll probably end up raise call raise calling off a race folding under the gun if that's the case with the ace queen but yeah like at the end of the day the hands played itself i've done everything that i could sometimes you play your best and you don't win and you don't cash and at the end of the day it's Two hands after the break, and I jam ace queen and ace king. And those are the three hands we lost all night of any note, and we're out the tournament. So that's the case, and that's how it goes. And that is it. I'm going to go home. I'm going to relax. I'm going to work. And then next time we see each other on a vlog, it's going to be APT. And I am excited for APT because I am playing well. It's just me. I just need to run well deep. And we haven't run well deep in a while live at least <sighs> gutting but that is tournament podcast see you guys next time thank you and goodbye